My name is Carl B. Esselstyn, Jr., and I welcome this opportunity to sh share my research and some of my thoughts on heart disease with this uh, Global Disease Warming Conference. It's interesting that coronary artery heart disease is the leading killer of women and men in Western civilization. However, even today, if we were to look at certain cultures, like the rural Chinese, uh, the Papua Highlanders in New Guinea, Central Africa, the Tarahumara Indians in northern Mexico, coronary artery disease is, is virtually non-existent. These are plant-based cultures. And if the truth were known, coronary artery heart disease, which wreaks such havoc, uh, is nothing more than a toothless paper tiger that need never ever exist. And if it does exist, it need never ever progress. Now the question that remains is, can people who are living in a Western society where there is rampant cardiovascular disease, are those persons who have cardiovascular disease willing to commit to a type of plant-based culture or plant-based nutrition? And if they do commit to this plant-based nutrition, can it halt or reverse their disease? Well, there's a very, very powerful uh, example sort of from a historical standpoint. If we were to look at what happened in World War II in Norway, it was characteristic of the conquering Axis powers of Germany that when they overran the Low Countries of Holland and Belgium and occupied Denmark and Norway, that they would take away their livestock for the troops. They would take away their cattle, their horses, their pigs, their chickens, their turkeys, and so forth. And it was interesting that if we looked at deaths from cardiovascular disease in Norway in 1927, going up, 1930, going up, 1935, going up, 1939, in come the Germans, away goes the meat and the dairy, and down suddenly. There they are, the enemy is living in your backyard, a time of greatest personal stress. Deaths from heart attack and stroke are plummeting right through 1945, when with the cessation of hostilities, there was a resumption of meat and dairy, and immediately we again had an increase in deaths from circulatory diseases, heart attack and stroke. I'd also like to try to share with you a patient with coronary artery disease. This was a young 44-year-old physician, and uh, when he had his heart attack, I think you can see his angiogram here clearly shows where the artery is so diseased and narrowed. And he also was rather wary, this was in 1996, he was rather wary about taking any statin drugs, and I said, fine, let's just be sure that you eat totally plant-based, and he did. He was totally committed. And about 30 months later, he had another angiogram, and sure enough, as you can see, it went from this diseased, narrowed artery in 1996 to this one, which is now uh, fully wide open. Again, demonstrating proof of concept, because he had been <clears throat> reticent to take any cholesterol-lowering drugs, that what was responsible for reversing his illness was his willingness to totally partake of plant-based nutrition. This has been certainly confirmed in multiple times over the last 20 years. And I think the literature is really quite solid on the fact that I think it is time that physicians really uh, grasp the concept and the idea that plant-based nutrition can accomplish some really almost miraculous type of goals with patients with significant cardiovascular disease. Well, we have now got an experience with well over 250 patients that indeed I find that patients uh, rejoice when they are fully educated about what has been the causation of their illness and what they can do to absolutely turn it around and reverse it. I think it's important for the, us, in order to make this happen, uh, to give a great deal of respect though, to patients. And it may take me upwards of four or five hours in a single setting 
with a group of patients who have the disease to have them have this seminar of counseling which achieves, achieves these goals. Now, I don't expect uh, this to be the responsibility of the cardiologist or the treating physician because they will not have this kind of time in their practice. But I think we are at a time where this disease is so significant and the treatment of it is so powerful when it is plant-based nutrition that we are going to have to develop uh, uh, apprenticeships where either nurse practitioners or physicians who have this pa passion, who have this skill set, are willing to commit to show patients how to do this. Because the answer to this disease has certainly not been a pill. It's not been a procedure. The stents and the coronary bypass surgery just don't get the job done. I mean, even those who do these procedures rec rec recognize that they are but stopgap patch jobs. If we're going to end the disease, we have to actually treat the causation of the illness. This is a foodborne illness, and it can be stopped. But there's even a bigger uh, message uh, beyond uh, the uh, mere treatment of coronary artery disease, because if we look at these common chronic killing diseases, I think you, one can make a very strong argument. Do we have multiple common chronic killing diseases, or do we have one that has multiple manifestations? For example, Suppose I start treating a patient who is 250 pounds, definitely overweight, who's had a heart attack. He is obese, or she is obese, diabetic, hypertensive, and uh, interestingly enough, they just get it, and they get it right. So now let's say it's nine or 10 months later, and they don't weigh 250 pounds. They now weigh 175 or 180 pounds. They're no longer obese. They're no longer hypertensive, they don't have any more high blood pressure. Their diabetes has resolved. Their risk of a future heart attack and stroke are gone. And also markedly diminished is the likelihood that they'll have one of the common Western cancers of breast, prostate, colon, and pancreas. And also the likelihood of their having gallstones, diverticulitis, osteoporosis, asthma, allergies. So many things are tied up with what could be this tremendous seismic revolution in health that will never come from a pill or a procedure. But it will come when we in the medical profession are willing to have the grit and the determination, the patience and understanding to try to show patients what is the optimal lifestyle that they can follow. Finally, may I say to the Conference on Global Warming, uh, I wish you every success. Uh, I certainly appreciate the opportunity to participate. I'm also confident that the more persons that we have who are willing to participate in the health benefits of, of plant-based nutrition will go a long ways towards helping with your goals. Thank you.